Now that we've studied differentiation with logarithms, that's going to allow us to integrate a whole new class of functions. So now we're going to take a look at integration with logarithms. So recall that the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. So that's true for all x not equal to 0. So this is true for positive or negative x values. So because of that, we now have this result. The antiderivative of 1 over x, or the indefinite integral of 1 over x dx, is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So this result is going to allow us to integrate a whole new class of functions that we couldn't integrate before. So let's take a look at a few examples. Let's start with this one. Let's find the antiderivative for 1 over 5x plus 3. So what we want to do here is we want to turn it into something that looks like this up here. So what we're going to do down here is do a simple substitution. We're going to let u equal 5x plus 3. In which case then du will equal 5 dx. And now we can do all of our substitutions over here. So this integral will then become, I replace 5x plus 3 with u. Now the dx, that's going to be du divided by 5. You see if I divide this 5 underneath here, I get du over 5 equals dx. And so we can replace the dx with, with a 1 -fifth du. And so we end up with 1 -fifth And now using this rule right here, we can write this as 1 -fifth ln absolute value of u plus c, and replacing the u with 5x plus 3, we get our final answer. And that's it. And we can just double check that the derivative of this quantity should give us back 1 over 5x plus 3. So just take note that if we were to differentiate this, the 1 fifth can be moved out in front of the ddx and we get And now just treating this like a u, we know that the derivative of this with respect to x is going to be u prime over u. And we get, now the derivative of 5x plus 3 is going to be 5, that's u prime right here, divided by u. These cancel, and we get 1 over 5x plus 3 which is what we wanted over here. Let's take a look at another one here. So we want to do a definite integral from 1 to 4 x over x squared plus 1 dx. So we would like to once again turn it into something that looks like this up here. Something of this form. So it seems reasonable to let u equal x squared plus 1. Let's try it and see if it works.
So if we let u equal then we get that and now let's try our substitutions see if it works so using these substitutions in here we get that this is equal to the integral uh, let's see the what's the x going to become well I have a actually I have an x dx here now I have a 2x dx right here but if we divide that 2 over that tells us that du over 2 equals x dx so we can replace the x dx right here with du over 2 and then x squared plus 1 that will be u now what do our limits of integration change to? Well, if x is equal to 1, the u is going to be 2. So you see, what we have to do is we have to actually put u of 1 right down here in the lower limit. And we put u of 4 in the upper. So u of 1, if I put 1 in here for x, I get back 2 for u of 1. So this is going to be 2. And if I put 4 in here for x, I'm going to get back 17. So all of this then becomes, now I'm going to factor out, I've got a 1 half in the numerator here. I'm going to factor that outside and write it as, so there's my 1 half integral. u of 1 is, like I said, that's 2. Uh, u of 4 is 17. And we get du over u. Now the antiderivative of 1 over u, that's the natural log, absolute value u, so this turns out to be 1 half. And now substituting in 17 and 2 and subtracting, we get And using, a, using a properties of the natural logarithm, we can simplify this as and so there's our answer. So this definite integral evaluates out to 1 half times the natural log of 17 halves and you could evaluate that on your calculator and we get that that's approximately 1.070034 let's round it up 33 actually all right let's take a look at a few more examples now Let's take a look at this one. What's the antiderivative of the tangent function? Uh, if you think back, we don't know what that is yet. Well, now we can evaluate it. So to evaluate this, we're going to write tangent as sine over cosine. Now what we're going to do is try a substitution. Let's let this cosine x right here, let's let that be our u. And so if we let u equal, the cosine of x, then du, Now we can try using these substit substitutions here and see what we get. So then this becomes, now let's see, sine x times dx, 
that's going to be negative du if I move this negative over here. So we're going to have negative du and the cosine x becomes u and okay now we can evaluate this. So this is going to be negative the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and u is equal to cosine x And there you go, we have what the antiderivative of the tangent function is. It's negative the natural log absolute value cosine of x plus c. And so now we know one more antiderivative for a trigonometric function. And we'll summarize those um, this result in a table down here in a few minutes. Let's take a look at this example. Now here's one that involves long division. So we want to evaluate the antiderivative of x cubed plus x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now as it sits here, the numerator is a polynomial of degree 3 and the denominator is a polynomial of degree 1. Now normally it's best to have the um, highest degree polynomial in the bottom instead of the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform long division on this one and you'll see how it works out. So if I take x cubed plus x plus 1 and we perform long division, uh, what we end up with here is the following. So let's So let's evaluate this. So let's see, long division, uh, what I want to do is multiply this by x, by uh, multiply the x plus 1 by something so that when I subtract from here, the highest power here will cancel. So I'll multiply by x squared. So x squared times all of this is going to give me x cubed. And then we have to subtract. Now the x cubes will cancel. Uh, x plus 1 minus x squared, that's going to leave me with and now I want to multiply x plus 1 by something so when I subtract from here the negative x squared goes away. So I'll multiply by negative x so then we get and we subtract that. Now negative x squared minus negative x squared, so that that's 0, so the x squared cancels here. x minus negative x, that's going to give me two x's, and then that 1 minus nothing is going to leave me with plus 1. Now I want to get rid of this 2x, so I will multiply this by 2, and we end up with, and we have to subtract, the two x's will cancel, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Alright, so what all of this tells us now is that the It tells us that this quantity is actually equal to All right, so that's actually what this is equal to. It's equal to this term plus the remainder of negative 1 divided by x plus 1. Now if you were to uh, foil this, or uh, sorry not foil it, but uh, cross multiply or find a common denominator here and simplify the right hand side, you would find that it is exactly equal to the left hand side. Now many people are a little um, 
intimidated by this division here. Uh, it's really exactly the same type of division as you normally do with numbers. Uh, for example, if you were to take, uh, say, 14 and divide that by 3. Okay, so what you would do is you would, uh, well, let's see, um, 4 times 3, that's going to give me a 12. So if I put a 4 right here, 12, I get a remainder of 2. So what that tells us is that 14, let's say therefore, 14 thirds is equal to 4 plus the remainder 2 over 3. And you see if you simplify this right hand side by uh, finding a common denominator, let's see, 4 is going to be 12 thirds plus 2 thirds, you recover back 14 thirds. So you see, uh, long division with numbers, it's exactly the same as uh, long division with the polynomials here. We're, we're really doing the exact same thing. We're ending up with the same result. So if you were to take this term right here and uh, multiply x squared minus x plus 2 by x plus 1 and divide by x plus 1, find a common denominator and simplify this, you would get exactly this back again. All right, now what was the point of doing all of this long division? Well, what we can do is write the uh, indefinite integral as follows. So therefore, this indefinite integral right here, I'm not going to rewrite it, I'm just going to draw an arrow here. So that I can write as the integral of this term right here. And now this is much easier to evaluate. Now, we can write this as the integral like that. And now you see this is very easy to evaluate. This is just a polynomial. The antiderivative of this term is going to be Now for this term right here, it's a very easy substitution. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details, it's so easy. What you would do is you would let the x, x plus 1 be u, and then this is just going to turn into 1 over u du. See if we let u equal x plus 1. We get that the dx becomes du and this would turn into 1 over u du and the antiderivative of that is the natural log of the absolute value of u and u is x plus 1 and so what we would get down here then is this term would be minus the natural log absolute value x plus 1 and there you go we have our answer So the general rule here is when you see two uh, a rational function like this that you want to find the antiderivative for, uh, you would like the, the polynomial in the top to have a lower degree than the polynomial in the bottom. And if it doesn't, perform long division like we did here. And then we turned it into something that was a lot easier to find the antiderivative for. Let's take a look at one more here. So here we want to evaluate the antiderivative of 2x over x plus 1. So what we see here is we have a polynomial in the top of degree 1 and a polynomial in the bottom of degree 1. 
So what we can do is we can perform long division on this just like we did previously. And this one's actually a little bit easier. So if you want to uh, pause the video and try this yourself, uh, go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take 2x and divide it by x plus 1. So if we perform long division, this is a pretty quick one. Uh, we're going to multiply this term by 2 so the 2x will cancel. and subtract, so the 2x minus 2x is going to be 0, um, and then I'm going to have left a negative 2 right there. So from all of this, we get that so we get that result. So you see this 2 right here corresponds to this one. And this 2 is our remainder down here. Actually, this is negative 2. And so now we can rewrite this integral as So there you go. This one's very easy. This one is just going to be 2x. Uh, this one is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 as we saw up here previously. Uh, that is a little substitution problem once again. You would let u equal x plus 1 and then this integral would become uh, 1 over u du. And so this would be the natural log of the absolute value of u. And so all of this becomes, this term is going to be 2x, and this is just twice the natural log absolute value x plus 1 plus c. And there you go. There's our answer. And you can check out, if you like, that the derivative of this is 1 over x plus 1. Um, once again, uh, if we were to differentiate this, we would get 1 over x plus 1 times the derivative of x plus 1, which is just 1. So you do recover 1 over x plus 1. Now let's take a look at a common result that you'll use a lot and also a common mistake that people oftentimes make. So here's a common result that you'll use a lot. The antiderivative of 1 over ax plus b is 1 over a times the natural log absolute value ax plus b. Uh, to see that, uh, to evaluate the antiderivative of this, we would choose u to be the ax plus b term. So that's going to be our choice for u. So du is going to be a dx. And then this integral would turn into uh, 1 over ax plus b becomes u. Uh, dx the uh, dx is going to be du divided by a. If I move the a under the du, I get that the dx is du over a. And then simplifying this, we get and then this becomes
and then substituting what u is. And we obtain our result. And you can easily see that if you differentiate this, you do get back 1 over ax plus b. You see, if you were to differentiate this, if you differentiate it, you'll get 1 over a times, all right, so to differentiate the ln absolute value ax plus b, uh, you treat the ax plus b as a u, so it's going to be u prime, which is a, over u. And of course the a's cancel and you recover 1 over ax plus b. So that's if you differentiate this, you easily see that you get 1 over ax plus b. So that's a very common result that you'll use. Uh, so the antiderivative of 1 over a linear term like this, a, that's called a linear function ax plus b, is 1 over a ln absolute value ax plus b. Now here's a common mistake that people oftentimes make. What is the uh, antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1? Now a very common mistake, I'm going to write this in red so you don't do this, this is not equal to, many people will say, oh well it's just the natural log of the denominator. No it is not. It is not equal to this. So do not make this mistake. Notice if I were to differentiate this, I would not recover 1 over x squared plus 1. You see, if I differentiate this, we would get 1 over x squared plus 1. That's 1 over u times u prime, which is 2x. And that is going to be 2x over x squared plus 1. So you see this is not equal to 1 over x squared plus 1, which is what we want. So that's a very common mistake. Um, you see it worked up here because the ax plus b was a linear term. But as soon as you put something more complicated than just ax plus b in the bottom, um, it doesn't work anymore. So you know, uh, just don't make that mistake. In fact, as we'll see later on, this is actually equal to the arctangent of x, or the inverse tangent function of x plus c. So we'll get to that later on. So just don't make the mistake of thinking that the antiderivative of 1 over f of x is the natural logarithm of f of x. So this is not always, not normally going to be not equal to the ln of the absolute value of f of x. The only time that's true is if f is a very simple function like uh, x plus 1 or something like ax plus b, but then you would need to multiply by 1 over a in front. So don't make this mistake. This is only true for f being a very special function like up here.